Hi everyone, it's Linda with StampWithLindaWalsh.com. I just wanted to show you um, a couple of projects I've been working on. This week, and it's almost over, tomorrow will be the last day for half price off of Stampin' Up's fabrics. So, um, this fabric here, this is actually fabric flowers. I just, uh, I put it on my notebook and then I just made a matching card. So we're going to work on how to make one of these flowers. And on my online classroom, you'll find the tutorials, PDF, and videos on how to assemble both of these projects. These are a great little gift to give to someone. Okay. So what I started off with um, to make these, let's put, take these out of the way. Like I said, they'll be on your online classroom. Um, I use the circle dies to make this little one. I use the two inch one. I um, This is just a piece of chipboard so you can see the size. And then for the notebook, the one for the notes, I, wrote, I did the two and a half inch circle. So obviously the bigger the flower, the bigger you want the flower to be, the bigger your circle has to be. But those are the two I use for this project. So let's, let's get started and we'll work on the big one. This is the two and a half inch circles and I did six of them. And then what you're going to do let me just open one up. You gotta press them. So here is a circle. I love this um, fabric. It says Casanova, Kiss, Amore, Pan Passion, <laughs> Beloved, and so forth. Um, maybe you could have used this card for Valentine's Day. I'm thinking, you know, just a, I think it's a nice little cheerful card. Um, very elegant. Maybe you can even use it for a wedding. Uh, you know, that I think that would be kind of cute. So, um, you know, it's not just for Valentine's Day. Basically, you're going to just fold it in half your circle and then fold it in quarters. And to get started, um, I would definitely use, you know, your beige, um, what do you call it, thread. I'm using red just so you can see that you're really not going to have uh, much sewing to do with this. So don't be afraid, like, oh, no, I don't want to want to tackle this project. Um, not your end of your um, needle. I doubled up my my red, um, what do you call it, thread, I can't think of that word. Look at how wide I'm doing the the actual stitches. I'm actually going to probably put, I could probably do three. On the smaller flower I did two. Um, and you want these to be wide so then you can pull it. I'm not going to pull mine. I, I actually found out when I was making these that um, when I was pulling them it watch I'll show you what happens so you go and you pull it and you want to pull these all tight and that forms your little petal um, then I went to go do my next one and it would end up raveling around each other like it, this would twist so I just found it a little more difficult to do it that way so what I've been doing I mean, you guys try it on your own. I just leave it like this, and then I just go on to my next one. And you're just going to sew along the open curvature end, like so. This needle I have really actually stinks, so um, it's not going, it's not, it's a dull head. I think it's more for embroidery than it is for sewing. So I, um, it, it takes a little bit more of a push to go through my fabric. And so basically I'm just sliding these down. As they as they go on, I'm probably going to put one more little one here. Although it should be try and make it big enough so that it will gather. But I found if I if I um, if I don't have one here, then it's it won't gather. It, it won't pucker as much, and I really like it to pucker. The other thing is, since I'm using red, I probably should be a little bit closer here. So then when I come in. And I put my button on and so forth that it will cover for me. I, like I said, I'm just using red to show you on the camera um, how big it is. I mean, so basically just doing three stitches per um, petal. Okay. So let me try and speed this up and not talk as much so then you can see how I, um, I actually pull it all together. Because that's the real crucial part. I find when I hold it between my fingers, it lays my fabric flatter, flatter. So that's, you know, just find your own, whatever works for you.
Okay, so let's start on the last one. And let me show you how I'm ending these all. So it's really no, um, not, not much sewing, and I just love the little effect that these little flowers make. I think I might just make a bunch of them, just sit in front of the TV one day, and um, like I have nothing else to do, right? Uh, and then go ahead and crank out a bunch. So here is my little, my little chain, if you will, and I'm just gonna start pushing them all down. So what they'll do is they'll start to twist up, and then you just gotta straighten them out. Well, actually, these are kind of going on nicely. But see how this one's that way? So I'm just gonna. Let's see which way I want to twist it. This way, like that. All right, and we'll just slide these other two down. Boop, and a boop. Okay. So now you might want to just pull them tighter too, just to um, get your flower formed. And then once I found where I liked it, how tight I was pulling these, now just be careful, you don't want to pull too tight and break your your um, thread. But once I got where I wanted it to be, then I tightened it up here and I just put in an extra stitch. Because see how we did our knot on this end? You're basically just closing this end up so it won't slide anymore. And I'm just going to go through, do a couple little, um, you know, little stitches in there. Now I'm going to attach them. That's all you're going to do. So let's see when we attach. I want to go up into a couple little things here. Come back through and kind of attach these. Basically I'm just sewing them closed tight. However you want to do that. It's really no rhyme or reason. As long as you don't see your thread. And actually, you know what, with the red, you can't even see now that they're gathered, the red, so I'm happy about that, except for I can see right there. But I'm just going to go back through again, just so it doesn't open up again. Not again, I should say. Forever. Okay. And then we're just going to tie this end off. Make sure you do it tight because then your petals won't loosen up on you. I mean, actually, what I did on my card and my notebook is I actually hot glued these down. If you have fabric glue, you can use that too. I just like my hot glue gun. Um, you know, it's not that expensive. It's probably like $12, $13 to buy. And um, I just find it so much quicker. I love the quickness about it. Okay. I actually don't like how that little guy is folding there, but I think my little button will cover them up. So for my, this is the big one we're doing. I just used my three quarter inch black paper and then hot glued my button on. And these are from the Brights collection. So let's take out those. And that, this is all I did. I'm actually not going to hot glue it um, for you here. And just pick a button. I think I use these. And that's all I did. So that's how I brought it all together. Um, I did do some faux stitching and on my site you'll find out um, once you do this this embossing folder doesn't reach all the way across so I have a little trick on how to extend it on over and then also this is faux thread. It's not any um, baker's twine or floss. So that's the faux thread trick on the website too on the online classroom. So I hope you can join me. You can get started on a bunch of these and then decorate your notebooks and your cards. You can join me um, on the online classroom with, at stampwithlindawalsh.ning.com. Um, and then it's a nice little site. You get to join and, you know, interact with others, post your projects. I have a lot of um, upcoming um, challenges and then I also give away prizes. So I hope to see you there. Thanks again for watching.